Hi and welcome to the Toxic Mom series. First up is signs that you have a mother wound. Number one, you struggle creating and keeping boundaries. Number two, you feel lost without passion, purpose, or identity. Number three, you make life decisions to impress or get love from your mother or maternal figures. Number four, people pleasing and self betrayal is common in your behavior. Number five, you're often judgmental or critical of yourself. Number six, you change the core parts of how you sell yourself depending on who you're around. Number seven, and you distrust the intention of others. If this sounds like you, then you probably have a mother wound, and this series is for you. Welcome to the Toxic Mother series. This is part two. We are identifying what toxic means. A relationship may be toxic if one, you feel drained after speaking or spending time with that person. Two, the person doesn't recognize your achievements or life wins. Three, they only reach out when something is wanted or needed. Four, you feel resentment or general frustration in the relationship, but you're not sure why. Five, you complain to other people in your life about that person or the relationship. Six, there are bouts of no contact and no speaking followed by bouts of intense connection and spending time together. If this sounds like the relationship that you have had with your mother, then yes, your mother is toxic. And this series again is for you. Welcome to the Toxic Mom series. Today we're talking about generational trauma. What you need to understand as it pertains to having a toxic mom is that your mother has done all these things negatively to you because they have been done to her. Your mother has a toxic mother and your mother has the mother wound that you have and identify with. In a few videos, I'm gonna get into how to heal generational trauma because we want things to end with you so that you do not perpetuate the mother wound that you have to your offspring. Generational trauma is as much a biological thing as it is a psychological thing. Certain negative habits are integrated into a culture or even just family's way of living and those things are passed on from generation to generation without any real substantive long-term healing being done. But that ends with you. Welcome to the Toxic Mom series. This is part four. Today we are talking about radical acceptance. Radical acceptance means feeling sorrow and pain without resisting it. It means feeling desire or dislike without judging the feeling or ourselves for having that feeling. And this pertains to your mother wound and your toxic mother because at the end of the day, you have to accept her for who she is as she is right now without trying to change her. Because the truth is you can't change her, but what you can do is change yourself. You can heal, you can stop the generational trauma. And also understand that your mother with the resources that she had did her best. And if she didn't, well, that's something else to accept as well. Welcome to the Toxic Mom series. This is part five. Today we're talking about forgiveness and letting go. Letting go means realizing that some people who are part of your past don't need to be part of your future. When we are reluctant to forgive someone, it's because we don't forgive a part of ourselves that has done something similar to the transgressions that they have done against us. In order to forgive, we must have compassion. Compassion is the love that recognizes all of the preciousness that is lost and broken within others and ourselves. And when you forgive someone, you are letting go of the hold that they have on your spirit. The Buddha said that holding a grudge against somebody is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. All you're doing is hurting yourself. So it's time to let go and forgive. Your mother, just like you, is just another soul here on earth learning. She's just learning, just like you. Wherever she is, your toxic mother, forgive her. Welcome to the Toxic Mom series. This is part six. Now we are going to create a boundary. If you have a mother wound, you were taught from an early age that it is your job to bend to the will of others, especially your mother figure, in order to obey them, to please them, to make them happy. But this is not the case. You are here for your unique soul's purpose. The first step in setting boundaries is learning how to say no. How do we do that? With something that I really love called self-observation without judgment. Start to observe your feelings and thoughts from a third point of view when you're asked to do something Thing that you don't want to do. Is this something that you really want to do? If you can't tell if you're doing it because you want to or because of peer pressure, take a moment, feel into your body. What are you feeling physically? What are those thoughts that you're having, those feelings you're having? Observe them. Don't judge them, just look at them with discernment. Then take what you observe, draw a conclusion, and say what you mean. Stand up for yourself. You have got to take care of yourself before you take care of anybody else because you cannot pour from an empty cup. And you can be firm while still being courteous. Welcome to the Toxic Mom series. This is final episode number seven. We are talking about reparenting yourself today. Reparenting is the process of healing childhood wounds by intentionally making choices in your own best interest. Here are some ways that you can do that. Exercise joy. Find time to play. Create human connections. 
Connect to that childlike curiosity you had. Cultivate a new hobby. Help someone out with something. Listen to music. Create something. Get crafty. And do something spontaneous, completely unplanned. The second way is discipline. Start by keeping one small promise to yourself every day. And this will help you build the foundation of habits in your life. Like we said yesterday, learn to say no. And the third way is self-care. Focus on your nutrition. Prioritize movement and get out in nature and connect with nature. Touch the trees. Feel the earth. Put yourself to bed on time. Get some good, good sleep. Start meditating daily. That's my number one tip for self-care. Start meditating daily. It will change your life.